ability to cool homes uh, is going to be critical. Nova Scotia's Minister of Environment and Climate Change warned residents that a risk assessment predicts flooding will increase in the province in the 2030s, and by the time we get to the 2050s, there will be some very intense heat based on the scientific data. The province unveiled its climate change plan for clean growth here in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia on a foggy December day. Extreme weather experienced when Fiona lashed the province in September is a painful reminder of the cost of inaction. Fiona reminded us that uh, the climate has changed, and Fiona reminds us that climate will Will continue to change and the science backs that so therefore what needs to happen is society the economy needs to adapt to that new reality so what's in the plan there are 68 actions in total broken down into four main groups the biggest chunk of co2 emission reduction is set to come from electricity on a granular level, that means things like a coming ban on the installation of oil-fired heating equipment in new builds. Large scale, it'll be less burning of coal and a transition to clean energy projects like the Atlantic Loop, which would pull down hydroelectric power from Churchill Falls. Minister Rushton indicated, I mean, we need the Atlantic Loop. Uh, it's a, an important component, but we need the feds at the table for that. And the feds have made some positive signals around that. The energy corridor would loop in all four Atlantic provinces to hydroelectric power, flowing from Labrador and Quebec. The consistent renewable energy source would work as an ideal backup supply when wind turbines aren't spinning. The cost of the project is in the billions, and Nova Scotia Power's parent company, Amera, recently put it on pause after the government limited their ability to increase rates. The province is now looking to the federal government to ensure it moves forward. Along with the Atlantic Loop, we have other things that are, that are part of that. Uh, the development of green hydrogen, the development of offshore winds, uh, the utilization of the power and tides of the Bay of Fundy. Megan Farley worked as a coastal restoration and outreach assistant working on projects along the Northumberland Strait for the Clean Foundation. She says post Fiona, many of the sites with nature-based solutions on the salt marshes were resilient and survived. It was very exciting to have this plan to look forward to. Um, any step towards uh, more climate work, I always see as a positive thing. The plan commits to releasing an annual review every July to align with existing projects progress reporting on the Environmental Goals and Climate Change Reduction Act.